As a professional property manager and leasing agent, are you asking these questions that without you even knowing are costing you leases and renewals? Let me give you an example. Somebody walks into the leasing office and you walk up and say, how can I help you? Okay, so what's so wrong with how can I help you? Well, the answer is where have you heard that before? How can I help you? It kind of feels like you just walked into a retail store in the mall, doesn't it? And what are you trained to do when somebody walks up to you in a retail store and says, how can I help you? How can I be of assistance? Oh, I'm just looking. I'm just browsing. Not only are you trained to push them away, but your brain then has all of this cortisol flowing through it saying, ah, block that person, get them away. Even if you walk into that store knowing specifically that you want to buy a particular item, if somebody says, hey, how can I be of assistance or how can I help you? You push that person away nine out of 10 times. Here's a better way that you can approach them as a professional property manager and leasing agent. Somebody walks into the leasing office. Instead of saying, how can I help you? You say, hey, welcome to Oakbrook Tower. What can I get you information on? By saying, what can I get you information on? You immediately, you still greeted them politely. You were still in a hurry to help, but you're helping move the subject forward. You know, they wouldn't have walked in if they didn't need information on something. So ask them, what can I get you information on versus how can I help you or how can I be of assistance or what brings you in today? I'm Matt Easton and let's together walk through a few more of these potentially stupid questions that are costing you leases and renewals. Here's another example. Now I want you answering the phone every time somebody calls, but we'll save that for another day. Let's say somebody calls, it goes to voicemail and they say they want some information on an apartment. You call them back and you open the discussion with, hey Patty, is this a good time to talk? Or am I catching you at a bad time? Or do you have a minute? Come on, you are a professional. Don't put them in a position to say, yeah, it's a bad time to talk. Listen, renting an apartment is one of the scariest things that you can do in your life. It's never a good time for them to talk about it. It's stressful, it's scary, they're afraid of making a bad decision. Nobody goes and shops for apartments for fun. So don't ask them, is this a good time to talk? Plus, am I catching you at a bad time? Come on, it's always a bad time for anybody. They answered the phone, don't waste their time with that question. Now the one I hate more than any of them, do you have a minute? Has anyone in the history of property management ever leased an apartment in a minute? It shows that one, you're not respectful of their time. Two, you're not respectful of your time. And three, you start off lying to them. You know it's gonna take longer than a minute. So just put all that to the side, call them, get down to business. What can I get you information on? How can I help? Wanted to call you personally. It's important to me that we service you. Any of those are just great. Don't ask them, do you have a minute or is it a bad time? Okay, I also want you to avoid asking leading questions. They're manipulative, they're counterproductive, and you sound a bit sleazy when you ask them. Let me give you some examples of leading questions. If I can show you the perfect two bedroom, will you rent today? If all the numbers make sense, will I get your business today? Rick, you told me that your current lease expires on the 15th. What's going to happen if you don't sign a lease before then? Listen, I know it's important for you to let people know the severity of the situation and that the opportunity cost of not signing a lease is they're gonna be homeless. But you can say it in a better way than some manipulative way of asking them to tell you the story of what's gonna happen if they don't lease an apartment. Here's how you can handle that a little bit better. Listen, Rick, let's find the right apartment for you. I know you're pressed for time because you've gotta find a place to live before the 15th. I wanna show you unit 406 because I think it's a great fit. I also wanna show you 209 and 307. Does that work for you? Don't go into some long diatribe asking them to give you a report on how screwed up their life is gonna be if they don't sign a lease. Okay, more examples of stupid questions. Anything that makes that renter have to catalog negative information about your apartment. You could have the best property in the world and the best unit in the world, and if you ask them to find flaws in it, they're gonna find flaws in it. So don't be asking them things like, 
How could you not want this apartment? I can get it. What you're trying to say is, wow, this is a great community. Everybody would want to live here. But don't ask the question in the negative variety and say, how could you not want this apartment? They're going to come up with answers. Wow, you know what? The closet's really small. And boy, those whole seven steps that I had to walk up, ooh, killed me. You all of a sudden just put their brain to compartmentalize what is wrong with this apartment. So don't ask questions like that. They're stupid questions. Okay, kind of similar along those lines, but this is a killer. And I guarantee if you're asking any variation of this question, it's costing you leases. Can you see how this is the best property in town? Can you see how this unit is so great? Listen, I get it. The most important sale that you make is on yourself and you're sold on this community and you believe in your heart that this is the best unit the best property, the best thing since sliced bread. But remember this, when you say something, it means something. When the prospect says something, it means everything. So don't ask them, can you see how this is the best property in town? Okay, they're gonna be like, no, or they're gonna be like, yeah. But if they say, yeah, you just stole all their thunder. Let them arrive at that conclusion totally on their own. People want to buy. They don't want to be sold to. So be professional, learn about their situation, learn about their needs, present them the best darn unit that you can, and leave the idea and the concept of figuring out that this is the best unit in town totally to them and let them bring it up before you do. It's going to get you more leases. Okay, here's another one. I know that their budget is your business, but it's a stupid question to ask them any version of, is this unit too expensive for you? Listen, it's always too expensive. We all buy things that we can't afford. That's why there's banks and that's why there's credit cards. So don't go asking the prospect, listen, I know this is a much larger unit than you wanted to see and the rent's more. Hey, is this too expensive for you? Let them come to that conclusion on their own. You just present the best unit you can, present all of the ways that it's going to help alleviate their pain and it's going to solve their situation and meet their needs and leave price off. You don't need to bring up, is this expensive? Because the answer is always going to be yes. If you feel like answer, asking that question, just have a little Matt Easton virtually pop up on your shoulder and say, yes, it's too expensive because everything's too expensive. Deal killer alert. Deal killer alert. Deal killer alert. Hey team, come on in. Bring your team around the monitor on this one. This one's a deal killer. And I know you're just trying to be polite. I know you're trying to be respectful of their time saying anything like, would you like some time to think about it? Do you need some time to think about it? Guess what the answer is going to be. You got one of two options, yes or no. Hmm, renting an apartment. Let's see, it's more stressful than changing your job. It's more stressful than a relationship breakdown. It's one of the most stressful decisions that anybody is ever gonna make is moving. So do I need some more time to think about it? Yes. Remember, if they think about it too long, they're gonna be living in a van down by the river. So don't encourage that type of behavior. It's your job to work with them one-on-one -on -one as a professional. Think of yourself as a therapist. You're gonna spend as much time as they need one-on-one -on -one to help them work through this decision and find the right home. You're not going to abandon them and leave them off on their own with time to think about it. Trust me, you're gonna have enough, and we cover this in my boot camps all the time, you're gonna have enough instances where they're telling you, I need more time to think about it. And I'll coach you on how to handle that. Don't make that problem for yourself prematurely by asking them, do you need some time to think about it? Because the answer is gonna be yes. Okay, stupid question, any version of, what do we need to do to get your business? What do we need to do to get you home today? What do we need to do to get this lease? What do we need to do to make this deal happen? All this shows, is you don't respect them. You haven't properly qualified them. You haven't taken the time and asked the necessary questions about their current situation, their needs, their pain, to have a really great understanding of how to best solve their problems. If you know how to solve their problems, 
You don't need to bring up things like, hey, what do I need to make this deal happen? How about a $250 Visa gift card? Listen, I can save you a ton of money. Just spend $250 on a Visa gift card. You don't need to rent my apartment. Listen, if you're asking them, what do I need to do? You need to go back, retrain yourself on how to do your homework and learn about that prospect. If you understand everything that's going on with that prospect in the single most important thing to them, you can present them a unit that solves their problem. You don't need to throw on anything extra to get the deal. Another whole track of stupid questions is asking them about other properties. Hey, what did you like best about the property down the street? Don't put that into their head. Listen, you did a double whammy on them. One, you brought up the property down the street. Two, you asked them to tell you what they like best. So even if they thought the place was a total dump, they're suddenly going, well, even though it was a total dump and I'd never lived there, the bedroom was pretty big. So as far as jail cells go, it was pretty spacious. Maybe I should take a second look. Don't ask them at all about the other properties. Now, in our training and in our boot camps and in my live events, I cover when you talk about the other community. And that is in terms of them saying, hey, I think I'm gonna sign a lease down the street because you don't have this, or your rent's more, or they have covered parking and you don't have covered parking. That's where you go down the track that we talk about in the boot camp of saying all things being equal, let's say we did have covered parking, where would you rather live? And there's a whole track that we go with that. If you're not on that track and you haven't been trained on that track, stay away from talking about the other properties. It's a stupid question. It's only gonna put your deal in harm's way. A couple little nitpicky stupid questions that I hear all the time. Can I give you a call? Can I follow up with a text? Can I send you an email? Listen, it's your job to close them right then and there when they're in front of you at the leasing office. So do your job and work through their problems. If in those cases when you're unable or you haven't been trained on how to get the lease right when they're there in front of you and you need to follow up with them, you don't need to ask them permission to do your job. Remember, the opportunity cost of them not signing a lease is living in a van down by the river. So unless you think not having a place to live is cool and okay, it's cool and okay for you to follow up with them. You can call them, you can email them. If you've got their mobile, you can text them. Do it all, it's your job to be the professional to help get them out of this troubled situation, how to solve their problems, and how to take away their pain. You don't have to ask them permission to help them, ever. All right, here's the granddaddy of them all that I just can't stand and I hear it all the time on property. Hey, are you looking to sign a lease today? Don't ask that, it's a stupid question. Again, people wanna buy, they don't wanna be sold to. Are you looking to sign a lease today? Gah, get away, slime ball. I feel like I gotta wash my hands after you ask me that question. Don't steal their thunder, do your homework. Learn about their situation. You'll know in a few questions whether they need to sign a lease today, tomorrow, or next week. It's your job to find that out without asking that. It doesn't make them feel good and it doesn't make them wanna do business with you. So don't ask them, are you gonna do some business with me today? Just do your job, be professional. The deal will happen. If you're at that point, you've done all of your qualification, you've shown them the right unit, you feel like you've got a match and you don't know what to say, and you're about to say, hey, are you gonna sign a lease today? Try this one out instead. Where do we go from here? Man, that is far more collaborative, it's far more professional. It says, listen, I'm a professional leasing agent. I know the best units, I know the market like the back of my hand, I know everything inside and out. Pam, I think we found a great unit for you. Where do we go from here? Let Pam tell you, let's lock it down, or I've got three more questions. Don't ask, are you gonna sign the lease today? Just say, Pam, where do we go from here? You'll find nine out of 10 times, Pam's gonna say, you know what? I really like it. Let's lock it down, let's do the deal. To which you say, congratulations, follow me. Always, when somebody says they want the apartment, the first thing out of your mouth needs to be congratulations. Not only are you congratulating them for making an amazing decision at the best property in town, you're also congratulating them for actually making a decision and moving past this. You guys gotta remember, this is a tremendously big deal for them. It's hard for them to say, I want the apartment, so congratulate them. Boom, it's done. Oh, that feels so much better. 
When you hear congratulations, it's like, wow, I did something, I accomplished something, now let's move on. So, hey, congratulations, follow me, let's head down to my office, let's get everything taken care of. You made an excellent choice. Listen, I'm Matt Easton, your friend in leasing and life. I hope identifying some of these potentially stupid questions helps you sign more leases. If you ever wanna do some training on what you should say, I know we talked about what you shouldn't say, attend one of my live events, attend one of my boot camps, or give me a call, I'd be happy to fly out and do some one-on-one -on -one training with you. Whatever you need, you can always reach my office at 888-683-5885. And until next time, be great and get those leases. Are you ready to double your leases in 60 days? <laughs> I'm Matt Easton and I'll help you build a world-class property management team that wins your community's leases in less time with half the work. Learn elite leasing techniques, marketing strategies, and resident retention tools. Having a world-class system that delivers predictable leases, renewals, referrals, and positive property reviews is a fantasy that most portfolios, property managers, and leasing agents only dream of. If you've begun to think it's not possible for your communities to achieve the highest levels of daily motivation and property staff engagement, think again. If you thought that you can't implement a system for signing leases and retaining residents with complete efficiency, think again. If you don't think you can hit your occupancy targets at every one of your communities ahead of schedule and under budget, think again. Not only is it possible, but I can get you there with a Leasing University Boot Camp. While operating with complete leasing and resident retention perfection may be the target for the elite, other properties struggle with simple day-to-day -day challenges that if resolved could create a substantial impact in their ability to lease apartments and increase rents. Do any of these sound familiar to you? How do I set goals and plan my day on property? How do I answer calls to the leasing office in a specific way that drives 250% more leases? How do I tour the property and show units in the most effective and efficient way to get the lease signed? How do I handle every single objection that a renter can throw at me? How do I close the lease using a simple and repeatable approach that works just about every single time? How do I flood my community with positive online reviews from residents? How do I master resident referrals and lease renewals? How can I fill a pipeline with an endless supply of hot, qualified prospects looking to sign a lease at my apartment community? How do I stay on top of my game and accelerate my career in property management? The answers to these questions elude most property management professionals their entire career until now. I'm Matt Easton and I've helped everyone from individual property managers to the largest REITs build, implement, and execute leasing processes that deliver leases with predictable, record-breaking results. If you want to know more about Multifamily Traffic's Leasing University Boot Camps, call our offices today at 888-683-5885. I'm going to help you be positive, get motivated, get leases, and achieve all of your career goals in property management.